What happens when you put a career focused woman with two kids trying to balance home and work life in a room with a microphone? Lots of laughter, tears, and great advice. Welcome to Two Kids and a Career. We're going to continue the conversation with Joy Holdmeyer. She is joining me for a part two. She's a fitness guru. She's a photographer. She's a oil lover. She is uh, everything. She's a mama, though. We did not even talk about the girls in part one. We talked a little bit about them, but you have three daughters. Yep. Uh, Go through their ages with me. Okay. Taylor's 12. Parker is nine. And Addison's six. All perfectly spaced three years apart. Oh, (laughs) <laughs> How'd that work out? Um, I think we could probably do this for another episode. Your youngest, oh man, what a Aww. story. Yeah. Um, she was born how many weeks early? She was 15 weeks early. Um, she was born at two pounds. <sighs> so I had placenta previa and was on bed rest for really only a few days before I went into DIC, which is like, where your blood clots all over your body. So it was like a life-threatening situation for me. So they did an emergency C-section, and we spent 108 days in the NICU with Addison. So that was pretty life-changing. I remember the blog that you put out, yeah. and I just, I wasn't even close to having kids or anything like that, but just reading the updates and just thinking, how is my friend even doing this yeah how one day at a time oh yeah so yeah that i think that could be a future episode because (laughs) yeah nikki life yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of people who message me that go i know you spent so much time i have a friend going through this do you mind talking to her or whatever i love 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 sharing with other moms who are going through it or people you know email me and say my friends in the nikki what can i do to help them like what helped you most you know, are asking me about things that they went through while they were in, at a NICU stay or whatever. And I am all about helping those okay. those moms and those families. That episode to come, maybe yeah. in season two of this, <laughs> uh, with the girls. They all have to obviously have different personalities, oh, different yeah. likes and loves. Talk to me about the relationship because it's... it. For us, you know, it's still too new. Lou loves her little sister. She's a great big sister. But yeah. I'm excited to see how things are going to be. Different. And I And I know that not every relationship is going to be the same or even be awesome. But I, I'd like to know about yeah, this stuff. They're, it's so crazy how they can be so different, I you know? know, and how none of them can look like me. They uh, all look exactly like my husband. I just carried they them. do. <laughs> good thing he's good looking. <laughs> Um, but they all are so different. You know, my oldest is a rule follower and she's kind and gentle and she never was in trouble as a, as a child. So I never had to discipline her at all. Um, and then the second one came along and she's just like spunky and sassy and, um, totally into fashion and that's, you know, she wants to, you know, do modeling and all this stuff. And she's not into sports like, you know, the oldest one is. And then I had no idea, you know, where Addison was going to be in there, you know, but she's got a little bit of both. She's definitely going to be our athlete, but she has challenged us for sure. (laughs) Um, But it's fun. It's to having three girls. um, My husband's always like, I don't know how I'm going to survive vacation or survive this or three weddings or Mm -hmm. whatever, but they're, they're so fun. Talk to me about what you do for their future. I often say in most of these podcasts or these episodes that I don't want my girls to have self-esteem issues or self-image issues like I do. And I'm Mm -hmm. trying very hard to watch the negative self-talk and to just love yourself and love your body and all of that. Um, I'm I'm guessing you're doing the same thing for your girls. Right. How do you do it? Yeah. So I'm always careful, especially like in fitness, fitness and exercising and stuff like that is not about getting skinny. It's about being strong and healthy and healthy. They're always, you know, bugging me about what we eat and stuff like that. I'm not that strict. I mean, my kids eat, you know, they eat ice cream every day and they, you know, but I do try and, you know, have them eat healthy. And I talk to them about why to stay healthy and um, they're into sports and stuff like that. But we never say the word fat, you know, or skinny we say strong, or if I hear my child say, says I'm fat, or do you think I'm fat? Absolutely not. And 
you are you're a strong girl. You don't need to worry about what other people think of you or what someone else looks like. You know, we're all totally different. And, um, you know, we just try and keep everything really positive and try not to focus on what somebody's body looks like, but what our body's for. It's just one of my biggest concerns, just not all girls are going to be taught that or talked right. that way. And, and having the girls be in class with other girls and that negative self-talk comes out at just... Going into seventh grade here, and this is all new territory, but... And things are so much different than when we were younger, you mm-hmm. know? But uh, just keeping, you know, keeping them active in sports and keeping them around a good group of kids, I hope that we end up doing okay and, and being really involved with them. You mentioned about the ice cream. It's funny because Rachel Sauter, she is the owner of Leopard Boutique. She talked about, we started the conversation about social media and how you limit your kids to screen time. And she said, I understand that some parents don't let their kids have any screen time and that's their prerogative. And she said, but I kind of compare it to food. And Mm -hmm. she said, so in our house, there's lots of options. And she said that she has noticed when kids come over for play dates and she asked the parents, can they have a treat or whatever? And the parent says, well, typically they don't get to have that kind of stuff in our house, but at your house they can. She said, she'll notice that kid. She used lemonade as an example. If I give them the lemonade, they suck it down in like five seconds. And she (laughs) said, for my daughter, she'll suck on it for two days because it's accessible. Yeah. And she said, I'm not saying this works for every parent, but she said, I just, that's the mindset that I have with a lot of stuff is that if you let it be accessible to a degree, the temptation is not as great. Right. And I like I can think about that in adults too. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, nothing is completely off limits in my world, you know, like when people talk about diets, oh, well, you must not eat cake. And I guess you don't drink or, you know, uh, I have wine every night. Um, <laughs> I don't ever, I will not turn down gooey butter cake ever in my life. So um, everything in moderation, right? I mean, I don't let my kids drink soda at home. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we have a special occasion, like the blues game or something, right. I'm like, I picked you guys up. It fits his root beer or whatever. They get so excited. They go to a party. They have soda. But they still have plenty of treats. And I think you're right about that. I mean, just like a, an adult will binge on something mm-hmm. if they are never allowed that thing. So yes. I tell my moms, what is your thing? Okay, you need to have a little bit of that thing. You know, if it's a glass of wine, you know, one night a week. Or um, if it has to be every night. I mean, I have a glass of wine almost every night. So um, that's my thing. That's and I'm thing. not willing to give it up. It's it's my happiness. My family stays sane that way. Or I, I stay I, sane with yeah. them, I guess. You'd say they don't want me to not have my wine. But um, it's not going to change my entire life. You know, right. it's not going to break me. Just because I have that one thing or have, you know, if it's the ice cream, the kids are not going to, they're not going to be overweight with having just a little bowl of ice cream every night. They're kids. You were just talking about your moms. So if you missed it in episode, well, in part one of this episode, uh, you run GoFitMom. And so that's what I want to talk about now. I want to talk about what GoFitMom is in more depth than we did in part one. Um, And how women can get involved and some of the things that you want women to start thinking about and doing. Okay. Yeah. So, so really I I do have a website and um, on my website, gofit.mom is where um, people can find out about programs and stuff. I've taken a little break from the programs, the 60 day challenges to try and develop more. Um, There's a lot of people who want to do workouts with me and, um, you know, want me to put out content and stuff like that. So we were doing 60 day challenges through Facebook, uh, private groups and sharing everything there, but I've taken a little break from those. So I've kept the page open. So if you go to gofit.mom or you go to gofitmom on Facebook, you can, uh, get a link to my private group. It's the gofitmom community. Okay. Okay, and so I've kept this community page there. It's a private group. You have to answer a few questions to be part of the group because um, there's no negativity in there. There's no judging or knocking others down. (laughs) It's only for people who truly want to be motivated and inspired by other moms and want accountability and want to share and post 
their workouts and their nutrition. And we just all lift each other up. And it's all just a community of exer- exercise and, and nutrition and, you know, mom talk and um, raising kids and stuff like that. And we, you know, we share a lot of fun stuff and it's funny and it's we, we laugh a lot. And we joke a lot. And but it's a awesome community of women. So I welcome anybody to be part of it if that's something that they're looking for. Again, it is gofit.mom for the website. Mm -hmm. And then on the Facebook, it's the GoFit Mom community. Correct. Okay. And so you want to share a couple of things that someone listening right now, this is what they would get from GoFit Mom, like self-development. Right. Let's talk about that. Yeah. So, you know, in my challenges, I would try and start with our mindset because so many women beat themselves up and they, um, they're they like, I'm not that, I'm not this. I've had all these goals for years. So I can't accomplish anything. You have to start with your mindset. So a few years ago, I decided as a New Year's resolution, I hate using that word, but as a goal for my, for my year, I was like, I'm going to start listening to inspiring podcasts. This was like three years ago. So I was so excited about you having a podcast because I've been following, there's five or six of my favorite podcasts that I would listen to on my commute because my commute's about 30 minutes to mm-hmm. work and from, and and it changed my world. Like my, just my mental attitude about life. Well, what are some of those podcasts? Okay. Um, some of my favorites are um, Lori Har- Harder. I love Rachel Hollis's Rise podcast. Mm-hmm. The Gold Digger. The Gold Digger. The Gold Digger Whenever podcast. I heard that, I was like, Gold Digger? No. the yeah. Goal. G-O-A-L. Yeah. The Good Life Project. Ooh. I'm writing all these down. Yeah. I actually have a list of them. I put them on my Insta and my Facebook. Okay. I shared my top six um, podcasts. Okay. And is that at Go. Fit mom uh, go or? fit mom on instagram okay yep so i took a little break from podcasts because th- this past year i made it a goal to do audiobooks and i'm doing through doing them just through the library oh wow but i said i my goal this year because i have i can only read when i'm on vacation pretty much or on a treadmill you know walking i mean i don't get time to read a book so this year my goal was to read one book a month through audio throughout the year. And I'm already like on my 10th book nice. of this year. So um, that has been, again, life changing, you know, just little, if you could just, I forget whose book it was. And it was like, if you could just read 10 pages of a book per day, think of where you'll be at the end of a year, you know, and everybody says, oh, I don't have time to read, but could you get through 10 pages a day? Probably. Or could you listen to 10 pages a day? Mm-hmm. Listening is probably the easiest for most people. Right. I'm like, I can do that. And I'm already through 10 books. And it, that just is more knowledge. And and I always read books about self-development and, and you know, that business. or And so um, I try and encourage moms to start listening to something worthwhile. Start meditating. Start journaling. Start some self-development. I started with the self-development and the self-help books. That's what I call them recently. And beginning with Rachel Hollis. And and Girl Stop Apologizing, her follow-up book, one of the things that she says to do is, and, and I've been told to do this before, but for some reason it resonated with her because she said, just make it simple. She said, at the end of the day, before you go to bed, have, write down 10 things you're grateful for. Yes. Just 10 simple things. Like it could be air conditioning. It could be water. Just 10 things because then you're going to start going through your day being grateful for things. Yes. And it is a way of thinking, and I am learning that. I am learning to wake up and instead of saying I'm tired, taking a deep breath and just saying today is going to be a good day. Right. And today is going to be great. And I have noticed on those days, they tend to be drama free. Um, Absolutely. It's just a matter of training your brain. It is. Yeah. Most people, they say most people wake up with already with the thought that they're tired and it's not going to be a good day because they hit snooze or something like that. Mm -hmm. So they already have a a negative outlook on the day before they even get out of bed. So if you can hit the, hit the alarm button, lay there for five more minutes and think I'm grateful for today. It's going to be a beautiful day. I can't, I, you know, I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait to see what today holds and you get out of bed. You're start, you're starting your whole day differently. 
And that's part of when you write down the 10 things you're grateful for. It's it's part of journaling. And what I started added, adding to that, and this is something that um, I learned from Judy's book, Fear is My Homeboy, she started saying, and, and this is a very Oprah thing, too, you put it out in the universe. Put mm-hmm. the things out there in the universe so that they can happen. And she had said something about um, you just write down what you want. And one thing that I did, I wrote down recently all these things that I wanted with this podcast, yep. these different goals. But then the next day, I went back and I scratched out words because I wrote, I want. Instead, I scratched out the word and I said, I will. I will. I, I have. Yes. I am. Yes. Right. People say, I want to be this. No, I, I will. am. I will. I am. Yes. And we did that exercise at the beginning of the year with my GoFit moms. I did a, a live on Facebook and I had them all sit down with a notebook and a piece of paper. And I said, I want you to start writing right now. 20 things that you want to accomplish in your life. I don't care if they're outlandish. Like, just start writing. No one else is going to see these. And then I asked them to share a couple. And some of them are like embarrassing. Like people think like, oh, I want to travel to Europe or I want to become a doctor or, you know, I want to own a farm or something. And sometimes it feels silly. Like I'm, I can't do that. But the first step is like putting it, putting it, it out, out there. there. Yeah. And if you say something to somebody else, it feels scary, but like you got it off your chest and now you just said it to somebody. So it's it's taking a step in the in that direction. Final thoughts for me, for the moms, for anyone. I think moms um, need to you know take things one day at a time. Do not beat yourself up. Everybody's going through a different season, but if you want to live a healthy, active lifestyle, it's probably right in front of you. You're just looking at something that's too strict, or don't look at diets. Don't look at these exercise programs just start today with something small and tomorrow do something small again and small changes add up to huge results so you can live a healthy active active lifestyle if you need support come and find us i want to end with your quote and if you could say it a few times about being a mom yep if you love your children take care of their mother that is always been my motto for go fit mom and it's it's really the truth because we all want to be here right for Mm -hmm. their whole lives so if we don't put ourselves first and we don't make ourselves a priority we're we may not be there for them one more time if you love your children take care of their mama Thank you for joining me for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe, rate, and if you're feeling really generous, write me a review. And don't forget to join me next week for a new episode of Two Kids and a Career.